this very day and to be able to join with you in this worship service. Uh, we are here because we have been sent by our international leader, the Mama Minister Koradas. She has sent her love, her greetings and her prayers to you. I can assure you, you are on her heart. Amen. 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 I also want to bring the apologies from my wife. She was not able to accompany me. Uh, but she sent her love and greetings to you. She would have loved to be here to be able to join with us. But she was not able but to receive her greetings. Amen. Of course, before we go to the other areas of the service, uh, let me just share what something that the Lord has been placing in my heart, and uh, every time I get an opportunity, I share on it because I have been sensing it's very vital at this moment and at this hour. Uh, it is found in Hebrews chapter eight and verse six. Hebrews chapter eight and verse six. And uh, that uh, the church and the body of Christ has to be ready in it. So, very briefly, in very few moments, I just want to bring it to us. In Hebrews chapter 8, in verse 6, the Bible tells us, But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also? is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Now, in that verse of scripture, we find three major things which the church in the day that we are living in need to address itself to. Um, to, and to understand and to know and to walk in that uh, Jesus Christ, when the scripture says he, have got, he has obtained a more excellent ministry, uh, it is not the ministry about himself. He has obtained it on your behalf and on my behalf. So the more excellent ministry that uh, Jesus has obtained is on your behalf and on, behalf, on my behalf. And it calls upon you, it calls upon me to be able to also flow in an excellent ministry without spot, without wrinkle, without any, uh, any, uh, 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 any defilement. So, it is important that uh, in whichever areas of ministry that we are involved in, we must strive for excellency. Amen. Amen. Excellent ministry. That was obtained for us by Jesus. Amen. So, wherever you are, in your area of operation, in your department, that ministry, you must go for excellency. Let's not be caught up by many things. But let us understand that our Lord requires us to flow excellently. Because anything outside of that will not be accepted by the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The standards are very high. And we are not the ones who have set the standard. 
The standards have been set by the owner of the ministry. And that's why uh, when the scripture says he has obtained a more excellent ministry, then it's for us now to address ourselves at our individual level to be able to get to that point of excellence. Amen. Amen. Now, the second thing, that's the first thing. The second thing is, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. The second thing is that the new covenant that we operate in is a better covenant than all the other covenants that have been there. And for your information, there will be no other covenant that is coming. This is a covenant that is going to bring us into the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you see, the scripture is speaking of it as a better covenant. And again, Jesus himself, who is the mediator of this covenant, he has already certified it as a better covenant. Don't worry about the speakings of the people. The people are not Jesus. The mediator himself has said it's a better covenant. So there is no argument. One of the songs says, I need no argument. If somebody wants to believe otherwise, it's all right. They can exercise, like now, they can exercise their democratic rights to believe what they want to believe. But we are in a better covenant. And we cannot fear. We cannot be shaken. It does not matter which other covenants are speaking, even in your family. When you know your foundation in this new covenant and you understand it fully, you will not fear in any way whatsoever. Whatever would happen, whatever would take place, you are established Amen. on a better covenant. Amen. And you are able to settle. You are able to, to keep on moving on. And it is in this covenant that Jesus himself said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. I want to give you an assurance today. No authority. No authority that can wipe the church. Because it is built on a better covenant. They can be wiped before they wipe out the church. And by the way, the systems that have been there before, they have tried. But all of them have ended up failing and falling. And the church is moving on. Why? It is established on a better covenant. Why is it a better covenant? It's a better covenant because it's established on the blood of the mediator himself. The blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Later on we'll be celebrating the Holy Communion. It, that was there where the covenant, the better covenant was established. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So don't fear. Don't Fear, we are approaching the elections, but you cannot fear because we are on a better covenant. Our covenant is not five years. Are you following? This covenant has been there right from the time Jesus 2000 and, uh, 2022 years ago. Praise the name of the Lord. It is still standing. Now, show me. Even the scholars, Joe, just go and show me which other covenants of men 
that has stayed that law. There is none other. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And if there is, it has a lot of faults, it has a lot of weakness, it has a lot of corrections, it has to be renewed every other time, and so on and so forth. The covenants of men, they have to keep on giving sacrifices and sacrifices and sacrifices. They have to ask for this sacrifice and the other sacrifice and the other sacrifice and the other sacrifice. But this one, when Jesus came himself, he sorted that detent once and for all. That's why the Bible tells us when he had ministered, he went right to the right hand uh, of the Father and did what? He sat down and declared, it is finished. Praise the name of the Lord. It is finished. Why? His covenant is a better covenant. It is an eternal covenant. It is settled. And hence, in this covenant, it is able to bring men, human beings like you and me, into life. That is why in salvation, we have received life. Amen. Amen. I have eternal life. Amen. You have eternal life. Amen. In this covenant. And by this covenant. And you're not required to do anything else. Except to believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The time. And the last thing. Is that. It is established. Upon better promises. You see. The promises that Jesus has given us, or our Heavenly Father has given us through His Son, they are better. The promise of healing, the promise of supply of our needs, the, pre the, the promise of safety, the promise of security, the promise of, uh, of protection, whatever, pro whatever promise, it is there. It is a sure promise because the one who has promised is not like a man that he can change. Amen. Amen. And you see, when a God has promised you something, you will get it. You will get it. Don't worry about the time. Time is material because he does not live within time. Oh, hallelujah. It is you and me that live within time. But the promise, the, the one uh, who has promised us, he is a promise keeper, he lives outside time. Yes. He is a controller of time. Yes. That is why he came to Abraham. What did he tell Abraham? He told Abraham, I am going to give you a son. Do you know, according to the natural uh, what, parameters of man, Abraham was out of time and Sarah was out of time of childbearing. But because he is the promise keeper, when he has promised, he will fulfill. Amen. And that is why it doesn't, what God has given you and has promised you, don't worry. When you reason out with the people, it will look irrelevant. It will be obsolete in the minds of people. But you see, that is only in the minds of people. Now, for a moment, you can look at Abraham. And here he is, at 75 years, and his wife closely following, and he is testifying in his village because he has a testimony. He is telling people, <laughs> the elders, I mean the elders of the village, you know what? God is going to give me a son. I am sure if they may not have talked in his presence, when they went aside quietly, they would be telling one another, you know Abraham has gone berserk. <laughs> is that what they that was there. The things he is talking have never been heard. But you know, it doesn't matter whatever they talked. Abraham knew 
the one who had promised will keep his promise. Amen. Now listen. Those were in the days of Abraham, the father of faith. We are in the days of the new covenant. And even in these days of the new covenant, the word of God is telling us and assuring us of a better cover, a better promise then the promise is sure. Amen. 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 So, I have felt those three areas are so powerful, are so important. If as a believer you embrace them, excellent ministry, and you tell yourself, I am going for an excellent ministry. You, you see there, you are not competing with anybody. You are just uh, seeking to fulfill the scripture. Amen. Amen. Then, you are understanding that when you are performing your ministry, you are performing it in the better covenant. Because you have a better covenant. That is your, your security. The covenant of God. And when you are doing that, you know, despite what, the challenges of life, the difficulties of life, you know there are better promises. You know why these promises are important? It's because there are times when it is dark in your life. And it's so dark, sometimes you can almost touch the darkness. What keeps you on is the better promise. Amen. The one who promised, he cannot lie. The one who promised cannot change his mind. The one who promised is not a man. Praise the name of the Lord. It's a better promise. So it gives us the encouragement, the stamina, the strength to keep on journeying on. Still by step. This is why the Bible tells us the just shall live by faith. Amen. 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 You perform excellently in your ministry by faith. You perform, and by the way, in your shortfalls and in your shortcomings, because that's where the devil stamps on you, holds you there, and he keeps on preaching to you a different gospel. Every time I ask you, you think you can make it? You, first of all, you. <laughs> then he has a list of all what you have done. Eh? He brings it back to you. Uh, you look at you and say, oh, I want to tell you, you can make it. Amen. Because the blood of Jesus keeps on washing us on a daily basis. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It was a short exhortation. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord do you well. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Those are my greetings to you of the word of God. So now, I want us to be upstanding as you join me to bring to us the National Presbyter, uh, Presbyter uh, Boniface Motiso, to come and be able to take us through the other sessions of this service into which we have been sent to be able uh, to minister. Amen. Let's give a mighty, 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 mighty applause to the Lord. Welcome. Thank you, Presbyter David Kidinja, our Secretary General. God bless you. Can we take our seats in the presence of the Lord? She's an ordained minister in the Crisco. We serve together. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Amen. My name is Pastor Christine Mutisu, and I came from Edoret Presbytery. And from there, they give us greetings to bring to you this evening. I thank God today to be with you, and I say God bless you. Now, I 
I'm going to speak on ordination. Say ordination. Now, in the Bible, uh, when people came to ministry, uh, they were ordained to the ministry by the ministry of labor of arms, by other senior leaders in that ministry. Praise the Lord. And I want you to turn with me. I saw you have got a screen, and I thank God for this professional screen. And we suggest all Christian churches in the country very soon they are going to have screens. Amen. So, turn with me to the book of Titus, chapter 1. Uh, or in Israeli, to Nasama Tito. And we are going to see what is required for somebody to be ordained to the ministry. The word of God says in Titus chapter 1, verse number 5. Okay, can we read together 1, 2, 3? For this reason, I left you in a grave that you will set in order the things that are lacking and are called elders in every city as I have commanded you. Now there's something called setting in order the things that are lacking. Say the things that are lacking. For a church to be put in New Testament order and a Christian church is a fine for the ministry. Can you say with me, Christian church is a fine for the ministry? Because it was founded by a New Testament apostle and a New Testament prophet. Are you understanding me? Any church which is founded by a New Testament apostle, we see it is a five-fold ministry. The five ministries, you all know not very much, they are in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. When he ascended up to nine, he gave ministries to people. Am I correct? Yes. He gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be teachers, some to be evangelists, and then pastors. That is the cabinet of God. Amen. The ministry of a priest was very much in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, like what Presbyter Gvinja said, Jesus brought a more and a better covenant. Say, more and a better covenant. More. In other words, he brought ministries, actually, which were not there. In the Old Testament, it was the king and the prophet and the priest. Say, the, the prophet. The priest, the priest and the king. And the king. If a leader is coming to an office, like now, 9th of August, we are going to appoint somebody, he was to be anointed by the prophet. The prophet was representing God to the people. Say the work of a prophet God. is to represent God to the people. God. And those who are listening to us in the Revival TV, we are we are recording from Parklands. And we are saying the New Testament blueprint the church. There's an order which needs to be followed. It is important we are born again pastors who are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Amen. Amen. Because God is looking for people. The church is an ecclesia. Say the church is an ecclesia. It means a called out. People are called out from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his marvelous light. Now Jesus Christ appointed the five for the ministry. In the Old Testament, the priest, the prophet was to anoint the king. Amen. And they worked together. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that is why in the book of Haggai, God was speaking and they say, Aha, uh -huh, two people work together, uh, the Joshua and the Zerubbabel and the king. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, there was an altar and a state. Say, an altar and a state. An altar. an altar is the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. The state is the nation. Hallelujah. And I thank God because the church is praying very much this time for the election. Hallelujah. 
And so the prophetic ministry was very much in the Old Testament, the priestly ministry. Some of the kings, some of the kings moved and they operated in the anointing of a prophet and a priest and a king, like David. David was a king, he was also a priest, and he was a prophet. You can get details from the book of Psalms. Amen. That's why he could take an import and he could wear and he could tell God, will I go and will I defeat the battle of Ziglag? And God could tell him, go and you will win. Amen. Are you understanding me? But some kings were not priests. Like King Saul, when he took the import and he akapa in 1 Samuel chapter 13, and he did a priestly office. He was rejected by God because he operated in a ministry which he was not called. Are you understanding me? He was a king and a king and a finish. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now I'm going stage by stage. So in the New Testament, you are priest. And the priest like this has explained so much. Jesus has come and brought a better, a good and a better covenant. He abolished the Old Testament ministry of killing bulls and the goats, are you understanding me? And the tattoo doves, so that he can over blood. People can over blood for the atonement. Praise the Lord. Amen. He offered himself once and for all. Amen. And he gave us an eternal salvation. Say eternal salvation. eternal salvation. But we need to be careful about the gospel of grace, which is moving in the churches very much. They say once saved, forever saved. You can drink, you can womanize, you can do anything. You have been forgiven forever. No, 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 no. No sin will enter heaven. Yes. So you are listening to me, I say no sin will enter heaven. Yes. Heaven is a holy place for yes. holy people. Yes. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Yes. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. John chapter 14. I go to prepare a place for you. So the gospel of grace, we need to be very careful. It is true, by grace we are saved. It is true, we have got grace to do what God has called us. But grace does not give us permission to commit sin. Are you understanding me? Grace does not give us permission to commit sin. Because the Bible says, whosoever sin, whosoever commits sin, his name will be removed from the book, from the Bible. Now, so Titus was told, go and set in order the things which are lacking. And according to the New Testament blueprint, the church must be set in order. Because Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not do what? Shall not prevail. Now when the church is set in order, it has full authority to resist the whims and the plan of the enemy so that we are not tossed to and the floor by winds or doctrine. Amen. And so the next verse, the Bible says for this year, verse number six. If a man is blameless, the husband of one wife, having a faithful children, not accused of dispersion in subordination. For a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not given to wine, not violent, now greedy for money. We call it a few of the looker. So there is that aspect of qualification uh, where we should be blameless. Of course, the qualifications are there. Amen. Paul was giving his son in the Gospel of Titus a uh, qualification for the person who was to be blood to this important office in the New Testament office. Praise the Lord. Amen. In also 1 Timothy chapter 3, 1 Timothy chapter 3, and here now Paul dealt a bit deeper when he was speaking to his uh, one of his most beloved son in the gospel that is Timothy. Praise the Lord. Paul is speaking to Timothy. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 3. We can go to First Timothy chapter 3 from verse number 1. This is a faithful saying. If a man deserves the position of a bishop, he deserves a good work. Amen. Okay. Now, let me explain something. A bishop is an elder. Say, a bishop is an elder. <laughs> so the person reads, a bishop is an elder. <laughs> Actually, a presbyter from the word presbyteros in Greek is a senior elder. Are you understanding me? Now listen, on earth we have got elders. 
in the New Testament in church. In heaven, there are elders. Say, in heaven, there are elders. You don't hear of cardinals. You don't hear of mosainans. You don't hear of overseers. You don't hear right reverend and maybe wrong reverend. Are you understanding me? The elders worship God there. Then I am I correct? Yes. So actually, a bishop is an elder. Say, a bishop is an elder. <laughs> now speaking of somebody who is aspiring to the office of a pastor, Amen. Who is being lifted to to be a reverend or to a senior position? Praise the Lord. Uh, that a good work. Can we go to verse number two? The word of God says, a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach. Praise the Lord. The qualifications are there. Somebody is blameless. He has been tried. And so we check pastors. We check them. We give them a period to prove themselves. We allow them a period of some time. We check them properly. Hallelujah. Amen. And if the church leadership is satisfied that pastors should be lifted to the next level, then they will call senior people who are in the office of a presbytery. Amen. Amen. Presbyters to ordain them to the ministry. Can we go to the next pass? Not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not colossal, not covetous. Not colossal, not covetous. Not going to pay a bit to sana. Ah, the qualifications that we say, God have mercy upon us. Please, put to obey. Praise the Lord. Put to obey sana. Hallelujah. <laughs> These qualifications are so many. Can we go to the next verse? <laughs> this is what we call a competitive fetty. Say competitive fetty. You are properly vetted, properly by parliament be before you are seconded. Are you understanding me? And you are given a car, you are given a driver, you are given a house. Are you understanding me? These qualifications are so many. Can we go to the next verse, verse number four? One who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all revealers. Now, ruling is another thing. Praise the Lord. It is one thing to marry. And it's another thing to have children. It's another thing to have children. And it's another thing to mold them, to mend them, to become what God has ordained them to be. Say like father, like son. Like Say God expect us. God we produce up to our own kind. Okay. And the bishops and the pastors who are listening to me in the revival TV, I'm saying this qualification, we need to believe God to meet and to walk in them. So that we don't bring shame to the nation of Kenya. We have to correct things in this nation. Are you understanding me? Yes. I you say pastors and elders, there's something we need to correct in this nation. Yes. We should not be poorly anointing oil on politicians and we pronounce position to them. Aha, uh -huh, before they are quoted. Amen. God says, be careful of you, the looker, which is the love of money. Praise the Lord. And then the word of God continues, verse number five. For if a man does, does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? If you cannot rule your house, you cannot even be an MCA, member of county assembly. Don't even fight in the first place. You cannot be a women rep. You cannot be a member of parliament. You cannot be a senator. Ministry begins in the family. Can we say together? Ministry begins. Say charity begins in the family. Say charity. Say if it is not in the family, it is not in the church. And if it's not in the church, it's not in the government office. And that is why we are losing 2 billion shillings every day. Because there's a lot of corruption. Christians, tunajiweka hibo. Please, I am pleading with all my fellow Christians. Let us stop these vices. Praise the Lord. Because heaven is waiting for us. And no thief will go to heaven. No wicked person will go to heaven. May God have mercy upon us. Kenya is 86% Christians. But the people who are in the committee maximum prison, Kingonga prison, Kodiana prison, most of them are Yose, they are many in Langata prison, they are Robert, God have mercy upon us. Amen. Amen. So the word of God continues. Not a novice, that is, it's not a Christian, it's not a new Christian. Let's 
he been pumped out with pride and he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. We continue. Forever, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest they fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. So we must have a good testimony outside the church. Sisi ni barua ya kufanya nini? Ya kusomwa na dunia. Ambia mwezako wewe ni barua. Ambia mwezako wewe ni barua. Yesa mwa ine airport in Eldoret. And somebody was saying, Bishop, how are you doing? Are you waiting for Jambo? Jambo Jet? Yes, I'm waiting. And I don't know him. And he knows me. Because he sees me in our church in Lake Valley. And they also see me in a revival. Are you, am I correct? So we are later, say we are later to be read. Yeah. We need to be careful how we walk, praise the Lord. The way we conduct ourselves in our offices. By the way, even the way we dress. Say the way we dress. Yeah. Can you tell the person next to you, dress in decorum? Yeah. Don't bring shame to the body of Christ. Yeah. Yes, we need to conduct ourselves because we are operating on a better covenant. We are honorable members of the kingdom of heaven. I say we are honorable members of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. And once you are elected, forever you are elected. No election, no by election. Praise the Lord. We are honorable members. Because Christ has given us eternal salvation. Say eternal salvation. Now we continue. Now, let us stop there. Praise the Lord. What are we saying? There is a demand and there is qualification needed. And the public and the people of Kenya and Africa, they are looking on us. When you say you are a man of God, they expect you to meet the qualification, to conduct yourself according to that office. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. And so today, we are in Crisco Parkland. We are coming today, somebody to the office of a pastor. Amen. Amen. Now, in ordination, we increase authority. Say authority. authority. We increase that officer authority upon him. Are you understanding me? He starts to have more authority. Number two, there's an expectation he has to meet as he function in this office. Amen. And that is why Paul, that is why Paul now speaking to Timothy. Let's go to First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4 from verse 1. We increase authority. Because we are going to give the minister, we are going to charge him. Say we are going to charge him. Say we are going to give him a charge. Uh, now look now. Can we read together? Now, first Timothy, no, sorry, it is second Timothy, second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four, sorry. Okay, can we read together? I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and is say this a charge. And let me say, as, as a work in Kenya, we have a charge to keep. Can you tell the person next to you, we have a charge to keep? Say, as a ministry, we have a charge to keep. Number one, we are supposed to pray for the nation every day. Am I correct? Because we are the light of the nation. We are the sword of the... Yes, we have a charge. Say, we have a charge. Because he said, occupy till I come. We pray that the will of God should be done in Kenya as it is in heaven. Say the church is charged with a church. We are charged with a church. Are you understanding me? Yes. And that's what God expects. Not even in Christo, but all Christ all ministries, all the churches, we are by charge to keep. Those who are listening to me, I'm saying we have a charge to keep. Amen. People are looking on us, how we conduct ourselves. We have a charge to keep from God. And one day we shall be required in the day of judgment. How we walked in the days of our life. Then the Bible says, can we go to verse number two? Preach the word. We are telling that minister, of course, the time will come when we do.
do that. Do what? Preach the be ready in and out of confess, rebuke, exhort with all. So you see now, the work of a pastor, the work of a spiritual leader, when we increase that authority, say preaching, preaching. Uh-huh. he has to go outside there because Jesus says, Go G. Can you tell the person next to you, Go G? Tell him when, go, when we go out, they will come in. Tell him when we go out, they will come in. We have to preach the word. Are you understanding me? The church must preach the word. Hallelujah. Number two, we must, we must be able to be ready to preach in season and out of season. Now, in preaching and teaching, we confess. Say we confess. Confessing is to make sure the people understand. I was talking to a professor because in my church are professors. Are you understanding me? Yeah. And Dolet is a city of is a university city. They were telling me now the work of a university. Number one, to teach, to educate, to examine, and to send out. Are you understanding me? Say to educate. Say to teach. Say to graduate. And to send out. That is testing. Then they graduate, then they send out. You are conferred a decree and you are told go and do all that what this decree, whatever, whatever. Are you understanding me? Now the church must produce a good, well-rounded person. We must preach the gospel, we must teach so that at the coming of Jesus, eh, the bride will be ready for. Rapture. Say the bride bride. must be ready for rapture. It's to prepare. We have a church. It's to prepare. Say to prepare the bride of Christ. Amen. And there are many aspects of preparation. The church is still weak. Are you understanding me? The church is still weak. And we are going to know by next week people will fought upon uh, upon the lines of the parties of the stronghold, political parties stronghold where they are. May God have mercy upon us. We must ask God to give us a man after his own heart. I am pleading with the Kenyans. Please ask God to give you a man after his own heart. It is God who does the choosing. When Samuel was sent to Bethlehem, First Samuel chapter 16, and the year started lining his children. Samuel saw Abinadab. And he said, you look like a king. God told him, no, 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 no. I have rejected him. He's not a king. Are you understanding me? Then the summer came. Listening to me, bishops and pastors. And Samuel said, yeah, he looked like a king. God told Samuel, don't look on the outside. God looks on the outside. Say, Jesus on the inside. Jesus. Working on the outside. Wow. Say, God begins from the inside. And they start to work on the outside. Amen. So on 9th of August, we should not go by opinion polls or by what and the word. We must put people with the credible testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We must put people who are Christians, practicing Christians, people who live holy. Hallelujah. Amen. Check their marriage. Church person, you check their marriage. Yeah, check their marriage life. Are you understanding me? Yes. Check whether they go to church. Check the way they are planting Christian. Amen. I leave the, that. I don't want to convince you here. Amen. We are in season exhort. We are taught to convince, to rebuke, to exhort with all long suffering and teaching until the bride is ready for rapture. Mm-hmm. The next verse. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, they will cause them to have itching ears. They will heap upon themselves teachers. You know, we are saying we teach sound doctrine. Say sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Say sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Say we have to teach the word with authority so that the, the believer is so strong he cannot be tossed 
to and fro by winds of doctrine. By the way, there is coming to the world many false doctrine. Duniani kutaingia mafunzo mingi ya kupotosha. Na wengi tu wengi watangolewa katika imani yao. Wengi watabebelushwa because they want cheap thing. Name it, claim it. Prosperity preachers. Name it, claim it. No, it's not like that. No, we have to live only. Praise the Lord. God is able to meet all our needs. According to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus, if we live only, holiness without which no man shall see. Can you say with me, holiness, holiness. without which without no, man no man will see God? See that is the qualification. Praise the Lord. I'm through with my ordination message. Praise the Lord. So we want to move to that uh, ministry. After that, God willing, we'll see how the Lord is going to help us when we come to the Holy Communion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we have uh, instruction today, one of you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Simon. Let me ask his children to come because Alan was happy with his children. Praise God. Now, we are not obeying the children, but you remember he's working, he's working with, together with his family. Praise the Lord. I believe President Samuel Dikanyakina has checked this servant of God very well. And he has recommended, say he has recommended, he has recommended. that we lift him to the next level. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are not just ordaining, we are not just ordaining Pastor Rocco, we are ordaining him and we are going to set him as a presbyter sitting in. Man yes. is teachable, yes. is obedient, yes. is submissive. Yes. And uh, our presbyter Samuel de Karakina, who is also a member of the apostolic team, by the way, we also operate under him. Praise the Lord. Amen. We respect him. Amen. Amen. Now he's in Central Africa. Amen. Amen. So he is aware of what we are doing. Yes. Are you understanding me? Yes. So can you kneel down now? Uh, let me we ask you a like question. It, huh? Are you ready to be ordained as a minister, as a pastor of Christ Coworkers Fellowship? Yes, I'm ready. Yeah, you know, you have to know. Because he can say, Secretary General, National President, they did not ask me. And so they ordained me. Now he has said, he's ready. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready to teach? Yes, I'm to ready. exhort, yes, I'm ready. To convince, yes, I'm to ready. To rebuke, yes, I'm ready. Amen. Amen. This is a charge. <laughs> yeah. Let us ask your children something. <laughs> All the others. Do you want us to name your father as a pastor of this church? You are the AK. Yes. Okay, that is good. You know, all they are all in one accord. Say they are in one accord. Yes. So, yes. So, yes. Down now. so we will we will then and I've said we are, we are going to give him a charge. Praise the Lord. Yes. We are increasing authority. Say authority. Yes. Because somebody Karikina is a very busy man. Sometimes he'll be going to Congo, you'll be going to Congo Brazzaville, Cameroon, Amen. And uh, when he goes around, our papa now will be left oversighting this church. Amen. 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 And he looked like a broken man. He looked like a very good man. Praise the Lord. 
<laughs> in Christo Ministries, we ordain somebody when we are two because number two is a number of witness. Say number two is a number of witness. <laughs> Say Jesus sent two by two. Yes. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, today, Sunday, that first day of July, the last day of July, Lord, we ordain Pastor Japheth Oyoko to the ministry of the New Testament pastor in Christ Co-Workers Fellowship. And Father, we increase authority and we give him a charge before this congregation, before the elders, before the deacons, before his children, we anoint him, we anoint him, and we ordain him to the office of a pastor, yes. and also we set him today as a presbyter sitting in yes. to serve in this church. Yes. Father, we pray for more grace. Yes. We pray for anointing. Yes. We pray for revelation. Yes. We pray for discernment. Yes. We pray for the spirit of teaching, yes. the spirit of preaching. Yes. Oh my God, we ask you to use him mightily. Yes. We raise an age yes. along his life yes. that the enemy will not seek to attack him. Yes. Satan, we forbid you. We forbid principalities yes. and the powers and the ruling spirit yes. not to attack this servant. Yes. We raise an age along his life, oh my God. We ask you to preserve him. It is going out and coming in. Yes. Preserve him all the days of his life. And the Father, we ask you to give him the gifts of the Spirit. 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 The gifts of discernment. The gifts of healing. The gifts of working of miracles. And all the gifts which accompany yes. the pastoral office and the bishopric office. Yes. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Council of Presbyters to observe and to learn. Say you will be sitting with the presbyters to learn and to glean more experience. Yeah, amen. So the next presbyters meeting will come. Amen. Then in the same way, we anoint these two beautiful daughters, which Papa has raised, and we pray, Almighty God, we pray, Almighty God, grant them, grant them, grant them, oh my God, the ministry, the ministry of their father, we pray they will start to arise like Miriam, they will start to arise like Miriam, like a Deborah. They will sing. They will prophesy in singing. They will prophesy, oh my God. We ask you to use them to be mighty women in this nation of Kenya. Oh my God, watch over their life. Preserve them, oh my God. We pray they shall be married in all in matrimony. They shall be married in all in matrimony. Masaka rabayando robo soko robo yanda. Raka toko sakara mayanda ramaraba bozende. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, brethren, we are supposed to serve with our children. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are supposed to serve with our children. children. And I thank God for these uh, children. They are going to grow in this church. And the word which the founding apostle has pronounced upon the Christ church children they will be great in the nation of Kenya. Yes. Hallelujah. They will be mighty leaders and mighty women. Yes. But he said, our children will be great in the land. And those who are not learned, they will be highly talented. Yes. They will be highly talented. And so we release 
that administration. You will be talented in many ways. You will be talented in many ways. And you will possess the gates of your enemies. Papa, you will possess the gates of your enemies. I say you will possess the gates of your enemies. You will possess the gates of your enemies. Sakarabayanda, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. You will possess the gates of your enemies. And the God will use you mightily. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I am saying your children must be seen supping in the church. So that we became a good example to the other church members. Amen. Like father, like son. God bless you. Congratulations. Congratulations. God bless you. Amen. Now, in Mark chapter 4 from verse 35, and then I'm going to speak on a fellowship. Say fellowship. Say communion. Say getting closer with Jesus. Say going further with Jesus. Okay, Mark chapter 4, verse 35, and we are going to read together. Can we read together? One, two, three. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Can you tell the person next to you, can we cross with you to the other side of the church in 21st century? Say, God is calling the church to cross with him to another level. Amen. Hallelujah. Crossing to the other side because where the church has been God is saying he wants to visit the church again and empower it with the greatest spiritual awakening amen but we need to go ahead with them can you go to first 36 1 2 3 now when they had left the multitude they took him along in the boat as and as he was and the other little boats were also with him. When they had left the multitude, say that there are clouds, say there are multitudes, I am going to leave. Say, if God is going to use me in this great spiritual awakening, which is coming to the church, According to the prophecy of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28. If God is going to use me, I'm going to lead some multitude. Kuna watu nitawacha. God likes to be with you. Kuna watu utaanza kuwacha. Because they don't add any value to your life. And I'm saying to the church in Kenya, God wants the church to be with him. There are things we have been doing through the years as a church in Kenya, church in Africa. And we have to start to leave them. Church order and rituals. Say church rituals. Church rituals. And the ceremonies. Church. You know revival, it is God disorganizing you. God disorganizes your program. Are you understanding me? When you get spirit filled, there was noise in Jerusalem. And the people are talking in tongues. And the people are saying, these people are drunk. Are you understanding me? And all of a sudden, Bible says, the Holy Spirit started to use the mighty in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Can we go to the next verse? And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that 
it was already filling. <laughs> but he was in the stand, asleep on a pillow, and they are walking. And he said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now, there are storms. Say there are storms. Sema kukona madhoruba. Sema kukona mawimbi. Inakuja kupika kanisa. Yes, and that's why Jesus is saying, I want you to go with me to the other side. Because if we see things before they happen, anaona mambo, kabla yafanya nini? Anajua yale ikombele yetu, na anataka tuwe serious na ye. Bwana pewesipa. And he was, he was asleep. Amen. And they woke up and said, don't you not care? And the people are saying, Lord, don't you care? People are dying with of COVID. Don't you care this and this is happening? God is ever caring. He has not stopped caring for his people. Can we go to the next verse? Then he arose and he rebuked the wind. And he said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was great calm. There are many storms coming. But if we are with him, say we are with him. Kama tunatembea karibu na ye kwa ushirika wa mahombi. Hallelujah. And the Bible says they were always in the temple. Say they were always in the temple. Say praising God. Say breaking bread. Say having fellowship with all people. Acts chapter 2, verse 41 to verse 47. They were always in the temple praising God. Amen. So we must be always doing something in the house of the Lord. God is saying, I want my people to be with me every day. Not just on Sunday. Not just on Sunday. Amen. Can you tell the person next year, don't be a Sunday morning Christian. Be an everyday Christian. Say, God is calling for people who are everyday Christians. Hallelujah. He wants us to be close with him. Can we go to the next verse? And, but, but he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Uh -huh. And they feared exceedingly. And he said to one to another, who can, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let us go to the next chapter now. You see what, what God foresaw. God sees things before they happen. And that's why he was telling them, I want you to go with you. Because if I don't go with you, there are storms. Are you understanding me? And you cannot overcome the storms. There was danger ahead. Amen. Okay, let's go to the next chapter. That's chapter 5. Can you read it together? Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gedalens. Verse number 2. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately they made him out of the tombs. A man with an clean this is a principality say a principality which was in that country in the country of the Gedalens let's go to first number three who are this dwelling among tombs and no one could bind him not even with chains first number four because he had often been bound with his shackles and the chains and the chains had been fooled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. Say he was a principality of that legion. Praise the Lord. Okay, can we continue? And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. Verse number six. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. Even demons and principalities, they respect that person called Jesus. Your Savior is even being worshipped. Are you understanding me? Nobody can stand before him. They knew him because demons were in heaven. Satan was in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. I, 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 I always ask myself, 
inajiulisaka kwa nini watu waishi kumwabudu Mungu? Mpaka hata mapepo inainamia Mungu bwana pose. Can you go to the next verse? And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God you do not to men. Can you see this must this person is making intercession. Say is making intercession. Is actually using the name of the most high God. And I'm here, yes, please, nena kusi, katika jina mungu wako mbinguni, usiedo katurarue. Demons even know how to intercede for their lives. And some Christians, they don't know how to cry to God. God have mercy upon us. You need to wake up and you tell that demon to mend you with the fever, with the pneumonia, with the COVID. Hallelujah. Na magonjo yambi. Na kusungumzia katika jina Yesu Kristo. Au na mamlaka to wake up. Jesus said, kama uko na imani, kama mbegu kidogo, utangoa, utanena, utanenea milima na itangoka na itapandwa baharini. Yesu alisema, kama uko na imani, sema imani. imani. Kidogo, sema kidogo. kidogo. Kama ile mbegu kidogo sana, utanenea milima na itapanya nini? Itangolewa na itapandwa wapi? So we need to align, say we need to align. The church in Kenya need to align and we go ahead with Jesus. We go to the other side with Jesus. He will teach us how to command mountains. Praise the Lord. Amen. Even if demons are pleading for mercy, they ought to intercede. I say, God have mercy upon us. You know they were never before us. At the big and of course you will be raptured. Is it will be raptured? And that is why it is not good for you to be talking to demons. What is your name? How do you operate? What is your license? They can cheat you. Are you understanding me? Cast them out in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Okay, can we go to verse number 8? For he said to him, Come out of the man, you are a clean spirit. So what should we do when we are casting demons in the ministry of deliverance? You say, I cast you out of this man. Come out him, out of him in Jesus' name. Amen. But first, ask him how he allowed the demon to come in. See, Leo? Yeah. Angalia, alikubalia na muna gani? Kame mulangu alifungua? Kama ni magano alifanya nini? He has to renounce and denounce. Are you understanding me? He has to renounce and denounce. Praise the Lord. Can we continue? Then he asked him, what is your name? And the answer is saying, my name is Legion, for we are men. Demons don't torment somebody when it's alone. I'm going to pay for more. 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 It's a coffin. Say coffin. Coffin of witches. Coffin of witches. I'm going to pay for more. 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 in the night. A thief cannot attack you alone. Lazima ungane watatu ama waine, mmoja yako mbele, mwingine yako nyuma. Unaelewa? Alafu wanakuja wanakufamia. Are you understand me? Yes. Do you understand that principle? Yes. Do you understand that principle? Yes. But the Bible says greater is he that is than he that is in the Amen. We are more than Amen. We continue. And also he begged him honestly that he would not send them out of the country. You see, even demons, they know their place. They are pleading. When I take a wakai mahali flani, when they plead wakai mahali flani, they know how to plead for mercy. Hallelujah. Buana asifiwe. When Cain killed Abel in Genesis chapter 4, and God sent him away, and he was wondering. Cain came to himself, and he told God, You have cast me out from your presence, and whosoever will find me, ule nitakutana na yeni. Ah, go to Genesis. Go to Genesis. But the first one that I have to do is to be with you. Amen. Genesis chapter 4. From verse number 8. From verse number 8. 
Can you read it together? Yes. And now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose against his brother Abel and he killed him. Can you tell the person next to you, please, don't lie against me. <laughs> when you are in the gospel field, <laughs> preaching the gospel, and you attack me. <laughs> Say, when we go out for witnessing, for evangelism, don't the lies against me and attack me when we are in the field. I beseech you. Amen. Amen. You see, this, this is a teaching. Am I correct? Yes. You can go with mission with the people and they lie against you in the field. You find what is this? Can we go to the next verse? Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Can you tell the person next to you, can you be my brother's keeper? Can you keep me in my faith? Can you be praying for me every day? Ask him, pray with me every day. And I will also pray for you. Tell him, let us keep one another in the faith by praying for one another. The Bible says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. am i correct yes. it's in the book of james can we continue okay let us continue and he said what have i done the voice of your brother what have you done is the blood is crying out to me from the ground we have to repent of the sin of shedding blood in Kenya. the blood which have been shedding this nation is still crying am i correct but we are going to ask god to show us mercy to silence the voice of that blood by the blood which was shed on the cross of Calvary. That blood is great. Praise the Lord. Can we go to verse number 11? So now you are cast from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your and God has cast a kind. You will see now. You will see. Can we go to verse number 12? When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on earth. What? It is serious. This serious judgment now by God. First number 13. And a kind say to God, listen, intercession, say intercession. Any sin can be forgiven. Any judgment, you can bring intercession. And God can show you mercy. Can we read it together? And the kind say to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Now, this is in the session now. Can we go to the next pass? Okay. Surely you have driven me out of this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. Listen, I shall be hidden from your Isaiah 59, verse 1. Listen. My hand is not short that I cannot heal, that I cannot save, that I cannot deliver. But your sins and your iniquities have separated you from me. Now, kind is making intercession. Say intercession. And in Christo, intercession. Say intercession. And a teaching. Say intercession. And a teaching. Say we have to stay on our two main mandates. Say intercession. And a teaching. We continue, okay? Surely you have driven me out of this from your ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be advanced to be a on the earth. And it will happen. Say it will happen. That anyone who finds me will. Now he's telling God what he has already done. Can we go to the next verse? Verse 15. Can we read together? And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills kind, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should. You see now, he has made in the session, and the God has shown him a bit of mercy. Say a bit of mercy. I come and be okay. I'm going to set a mark on your face. No one will kill you. Are you understanding me? No one will. But this came out of intercession. Akuna mutu atakuwa. Lakini sababu ulimwaga ndamu kuna mambo yatakopata mnanielewa lakini hakuna mtu atafanya nini at least now he, he knows the dead descendants is removed see a death descendants has been removed 
No man slaughter, no man that. He can now live, but he send us. You know what? Hallelujah. So what am I saying now? There's something which the daddy told me very just ago. And you are, I think we are either in Uganda or Tanzania. Apostle Adidas. Setting a mark on a brother or a sister. I come from Eldonet, which was an epicenter of clashes. Are you understanding me? And I learned the principle of setting a mark. Say setting a mark. Setting With anointing oil. Praise the Lord. I anointed all the pastors and the members of the presbytery. COVID came. Na kuna mumoja alikupa bwana pose. There are many principles in the Bible we need to learn. In Congo, say in Congo, mutaulisa papa dikanya kina. Praise the Lord. Kulikuwa na mashida goma. Are you understanding me? Kisangani. Hallelujah. Beni. Botel. Bot. Inadani. Botema. Botema. Hey, Potemu, hallelujah. <laughs> Lugumbashi, Buyimai, Matadi. Sayyidi Kurukona Shid, and you know that legion of Western, Eastern, it's a lot of problem. No Crisco member lost his life. There is a mark, praise the Lord. Amen. Every year, we could anoint children during the move on. Muliwa Munaut Kufanya, move on convention. Praise the Lord. And the apostle could pray for us in the in the workers' meeting. In this ministry, there's an angel. Say there's an angel. Yes. And God will preserve your life. God say, God will preserve my life. God will preserve my life. The Bible says, when evening was come. When evening was, Jesus said, Let us go to the next. Go to First Kings chapter 18. As I come to the end of my message. First Kings chapter 18. I explained something here to back. Bible confirms Bible. Scripture confirms scriptures. First Kings chapter 18. First Kings Chapter 18, verse number 36. Verse number 36. Let us lay verse 36. Can we read together? And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening that Elijah the came nigh and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Islam, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your name. First number that said, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that you are the Lord God, and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. We continue. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and they lifted up the water that was in the church. Now when all, can we read it together? When all the people saw it, they fell and they said, The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The Lord. Can we say it together? The Lord. Can we say again? The Lord. There's something coming on planet Earth. Revival, say revival. And everybody, when the spirit will fail upon every flesh, everybody, Indians, Muslims, Japanese, Chinese, Russians, they will say, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. But number one, the altar must be repaired. Say the altar must be repaired. Say the church 
must be put in order. There is a putting in order things which are lacking. When the church is set in order and all the people, they are of one accord, of one mind, doing the same thing, following the pattern of the New Testament, revival will come. Amen. I say revival will come. Amen. And it is coming very soon. I say revival is coming. Amen. Revival is coming. Amen. And then when you say, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. Even which doctors, they will say the Lord is God. Praise the Lord. So we have come to a time of the church. We call it the time of the evening sacrifice. Wakati wajioni wa kanisa. Hallelujah. Wakati wajioni wa. Okay, Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Let, I, let me confess. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Yeah. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And we're going there. Romans chapter 13. Can we read together? And do this, knowing that that now it is high time to awake out of for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believe. Say our salvation. Say the salvation of rapture. Say the salvation of rapture. There is what you call instantaneous salvation when you got born again. There is progressive salvation. God saves you every day. Are you understanding me? But there's a salvation where you'll be taken out of this world. Amen. Can we go to the next number? The word of God says, uh -huh. The night is far. The day is. There is uh, therefore, let us cast off the words of. And let us put on the armor of light. We continue verse 13. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in rapidly, not in drunkenness, not in lewdness, and the last, not in strife and envy. Verse 14. But put on. Tell the person next to you, put on. Tell him, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make no provision for the flesh to fulfill it. Tell him, uh, put on. Hallelujah, the Lord Jesus Christ. God is calling the church to move to the next level. The church has come to a time in the Bible we call it the evening sacrifice. Are you understanding me? Say the evening sacrifice. Matthew chapter 26 as we come to the Holy Communion. Matthew chapter 26. And verse number 26. We break the bread together. Matthew 26, verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and he gave it to the disciples and he said, Take it, this is my body. Uh -huh. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant. Say a better covenant. A better covenant. Say a better covenant. a better covenant. With the better promises. Better which is shed for many for the remission of sin. It's shed for many. Not just we who are here, but for many people who are outside there. Amen. There are people who are outside there. That blood was shed because of them. Amen. Deaconesses, can you wash our hands? And then we break the bread. One poor sister. The word of God says in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. As they were eating, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, Eat. This is my body which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup. And he blessed it and he said, Drink this cup, which is my blood. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now we are ready to partake the bread. Today, you can come out of any affliction, you can come out of any struggling, you can come out of any torment. The children of Israel, they came out of their Egypt. Say they came out of their Egypt. 
So you might be in a certain condition which look like an inch of sickness kwa mandeni, kwa mashida imekulemea. You can come out today because this is a covenant. Say a covenant. Say a covenant. So can we take the bread together? In the same way, can we take the cup together? Can you take some time to thank God? Mushkuru Mungu dhidi aliumia msalabani kwa ajili ya dhambi zako alipigwa mijeredi can you go before God to thank him are you thanking for the body which was broken for the blood which was shed inaenda mbele ya Bwana mshukuru Bwana Lord we thank you for the suffering you went because of my sin and my iniquities and the sins of my forefathers oh God we ask of your mercy Lord we thank you for your goodness Lord we thank you for your loving kindness we thank you, Lord, for such a great love, for such a great love you have shown us that we should be called the children of God. We thank you for the great love you have shown unto us that we should be called the children of God. We thank you. We thank you for this Holy Communion. And Father, we ask you, oh my God, let every curse be broken. Let every sickness be healed. Let every disease go. Let all the debts be cancelled, O oh God. Father, we pray for those who are well. Let them be restored to good health. We worship and we bless you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We want to ask everybody, in case you might be sick in your body, or there is pain in one part of your body, you can touch that part. Yule ni mwili wako na tutaomba general prayer. Say general prayer. Tutanenea hiyo hali itoweke. Tutainenea itoweke. Aha, sababu imegusa na kama ujui mali umekonjeka unaweza kuwekelea mkono wako kwa moyo yako. Your heart calls everything. Father in the name of Jesus. In agreement prayer this afternoon in Parkland Christian Church. We come against any tormenting spirit of sickness, any tormenting spirit of infirmity, any tormenting spirit of disease, any pain in the body, any physical discomfort. We speak to you now. We speak to you now in the name of Jesus. And we break your power. We break your power. We break your hold. We break your grief on the people of God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We command you to come out now. Come out now. Lose your hold. Lose your hold. We free every brother. We free every sister. We free every member of this church in Jesus' name. And we decree healing from the clown of their heads yes. to the sole of their feet. Lord, let this word go to every one of them who might be in hospital, those who are sick at home. We send you a word according to Psalms 107 verse 20 and we break the curse of sickness, the curse of infirmity, the curse of disease, the curse of death, the curse of poverty. We break it in the name of Jesus and we release your people to be healed in Jesus' name. And the people of God says, Amen. Say it is well with me. Yes. Say it is well with me. Yes. Give a hand clapping to the Lord. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God.